Chris, I want to ask you about uh, you being in the finalist for the Sporsky Award. Just what does that mean to you to have that kind of attention for your play this year? Uh, it's definitely an honor just to be mentioned with the rest of the players that are up for the award as well. You know, uh, I put in a lot of work to be able to get here, and I know I got to be able to continue to put in that same groundwork. And, you know, um, I just got here by the grace of God um, with the help of the rest of my teammates and my coaches, man. They put a lot into me, man. And uh, like I said, it's just definitely an honor. Uh, Chris, I guess first clarifying question. Um, yeah, <laughs> first clarifying question: Is this your last year of eligibility? Or are you looking to go into the draft after this, or what's uh, no? It's not my last year of eligibility, and I'll talk about my process of uh, what I'm looking looking to do after the season. So obviously, five years. Ago, can you talk about kind of your experience here and how much you've learned about yourself and about the program since joining Georgia? Well, number one, uh, ten out of ten experience, man. I done had a hell of an experience here. Um, build a lot of connections um, with uh, a lot of coaches and players um, and uh, just learned a lot about myself as a man. Uh, you know, I mean, I even grew into a man while I was here. You know, you know, everybody when you're 18, you feel like you're a man, but you don't really realize that about four or five years later, you were just beginning to become a man. So uh, that's, that's pretty much the whole synopsis of uh, my time and my experience here. It's obviously a senior day on Saturday and uh, mm -hmm. you're a senior that mentors a lot of young safeties, you probably mentor Malachi and Jacory and all them. Uh, when you came in as a freshman, who was the senior upperclassman that was your biggest one to mentor and what did you learn from yeah. them? J.R. Reed for sure and uh, Tyreek McGee. Uh, just like I used to see how hard those guys used to work and I just used to, you know, I used to watch them a lot very close in practice and I used to ask a lot of questions from them, especially J.R. J.R. one of the smartest players I ever played with to this day. And uh, he just poured so much into me. And uh, just a lot of stuff he used to tell me back then, I didn't kind of understand until like about two, three years later when he was gone. And uh, I just used that and applied to my game today. And, you know, I try to, you know, my boys, Decoy and Malachi, uh, David Daniel, Dan, uh, all the safeties, really all the DBs, uh, I just try to pour that into them. Chris, uh, it was this time a year ago, you weren't doing so well. I, I think you were banged up. and. Mm -hmm. Missed all that. How how bad can you look back on that? You know, because obviously you're going into a much different stretch, feeling a lot different this year. Mm -hmm. Can you look back on how frustrating it was at that time of year? What you guys were trying to accomplish? How mm -hmm. much pain you were in? What was that like for you? Uh, it was definitely frustrating. But uh, like you say, Mr. Run and the rest of the athletic training staff, uh, they did a lot of work with me, and uh, I was able to still go out there and perform at a high level. Um, but like you say, anytime you're dealing with an injury, it's definitely frustrating. But, you know, you just got to keep your head down and stay motivated. You talked about mentoring, mentoring some, of the young, some, some of the defensive players, but mm -hmm. Roger talked a bit about you um, also having a strong relationship with some offensive players as well. Can you talk yeah. about a couple of offensive players you have a strong relationship with and how you built that connection with them? Yeah, it's really a lot of them. Uh, shoot, me and Brian got a good relationship. Uh, me and Kenny. Me and Stetson, me and my boy Jackson Meeks, Kiaris, uh, the list goes on and on, you know, and uh, that just comes with a part of uh, being a part of a great team like we have here and the connection that we want to build. Uh, that's one of our pillars, and, you know, uh, I'm very grateful for those guys on the offensive side of the ball, on special teams players as well. I got a good relationship with some of them, and, you know, it's very tight with guys on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, that just all plays into the connection that we have as a team and uh, the love that we have for each other. You get one more win, and you guys are the winning senior class uh, in the history of Georgia mm -hmm. football. Yeah. Uh, I just wonder if that's noted somewhere. I mean, is that something you guys have kept up with, and it, it, is that a point of pride? Yeah. You also haven't lost to Tech, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And mm -hmm. how important is that, uh, being an Atlanta guy heading into this game? Uh, well, yeah, uh, around this time every year, uh, we always get close to that record of, you know, senior classes being able to break the record of wins. So it's definitely some. Uh, uh, that, that that we have in our mind, uh, as well as playing Georgia Tech, you know, it's a big rivalry for us. Uh, got a lot of history between the two teams over the years, and uh, you know, we definitely want to be able to go out, go out and get a win for our team, uh, our seniors, be able to honor our coaches. Uh, we got a lot of coaches that uh, used to play in this rivalry as well, and it means a lot to them. So uh, it means a lot to be able to get a win for everybody. Yeah, Kermit mentioned that when you, when you were younger, you tried to fight other players because they weren't playing up to, or they weren't, you know, taking care of business in the classroom, taking care of business on the practice field. Mm -hmm. One, did you win a lot of those fights? And two, mm -hmm. what does it say about you that you're so passionate and you're just trying to get the most out of your team and the most out of your teammates to, to get to where you want to go? Mm -hmm. Well, I ain't going to speak on the results, but, you know, uh, <laughs> 
that just come with the game, man. You know, uh, it's a lot of passion between both sides, and you know, uh, that, just, that just come with the game, like I said. And you know, uh, that's what happens when you want your brother to succeed as well as uh, people have pushed me to want to succeed as well. So you know. Like I say, man, it just come with the game, man. And uh, I mean, you probably won't be at a program where you won't see a fighter too. So, uh, you know, it just come with it. Sort of to that point, Chris, Kirby really harped on how much you've grown, how much you've matured. Mm -hmm. uh, just what has that process been like for you? And, and things like being a vocal leader, was that something that came natural or just something you kind of had to grow into? Well, let's just go back to the question my man said, just like my experiences here. Uh, like a lot of guys, when they first get here, you like you feel like you got it all figured out. But you really don't, you're just getting started. So, you know, just every year I've been here, I've been able to build on my experiences and uh, be able to uh, learn from, from them. And what was the second question, the second part of the question? Yeah, just growing as a leader, if that mm -hmm. was natural or something. Yeah. Kind of well, uh, you know, when you first hear as a freshman, you know, uh, you kind of don't know your role yet, just yet. So, you know, uh, I mean, I've always been you know, kind of a vocal guy. I like to have fun with other players, but the leadership wasn't there when I first got here because, you know, we had great leaders already here. So, you know, I just wanted to, lean back and follow them. But you know, uh, as I grew older, you know, that, that role as a leader begins to grow. So, you know, just as I got older, you know, I just continue to uh, better my leadership skills and, uh, you know, pull a lot of the younger guys along. You know, it's just a constant cycle here and uh, it's just a part of the culture that we built here and it's a great culture. Can you speak to first, I kind of, the, the bond of brotherhood you have with the rest of the class that you guys have with each mm -hmm. other? And then second, to the role of mentorship that that senior class has with other yeah, well, a lot of the guys that I was that I came in with are kind of gone. So, uh, uh, but like even those guys that are gone, man, they still we I still talk to them. Uh, they still talk to the other players on the team. Like it's some players that haven't even ever even met the players that were here last year. And, you know, they we got a good relationship and stuff. And uh, the seniors that are still here, you know, we always type, man. You know, and um, we do we try to do a good job of leading those younger guys because we know they look up to us. And uh, they know that we know what it takes to be able to win. So, you know, uh, they look for, look to us for guidance, and, you know, we're trying to give it to them as much as possible because uh, we, we want this program to succeed for a long time. Hey, Chris. Uh, earlier you talked about what the rivalry meant to, like, your coaches and stuff like that, but I wanted to ask what it meant to you as an individual. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a Georgia boy. It's an in-state rivalry. Are there other guys on the side of the ball at Tech that you kind of chitter chatter in before the game, yapping back and mm -hmm. forth and stuff like that? So what does the rivalry mean to you? Yeah, I got a few, I got a few friends on the other side of the ball. Um, Great players, and like you say, man, uh, it's just being in the state of Georgia. I've seen what this rivalry has meant from between Georgia and Georgia Tech for a very long, long time. And uh, like I said, just going back to our coaches, they let us know like how deep the rivalry really goes. Cause you know I've only been alive for you know 22 years. Some of some of our coaches are 40, 50 years old. So they let us know, you know how important it is to you know the rest of our fan base and guys that have been alive for it to see this rivalry grow for a very long time. So. You know, it's, it's, it's important to me, but it's it's important to me because it's important to the people that, that, that back me while I'm out there on the field. So, you know, I want to be able to win for myself, uh, the seniors, and like I said, the rest of my teammates and all my coaches, man, especially Coach Smart, man. I know what this, I know what this means to him. Um, and I just want to figure out the regular season undefeated. Chris, I don't know how often you guys get to do the good on good where you guys get to go up against Monken's offense. I'm sure in the off season or in scrimmages, but mm -hmm. one of the things we've seen is how much freedom these quarterbacks have to change plays at the line of scrimmage. You've been on the other side of the ball when that happens. Mm -hmm. What would you say about uh, Monken's scheme and George's offense and flexibility at the line and what that does for defenses in terms of maybe challenging them? Yeah, well, Monken, like I say, uh, Monken, Monken does a great job with the screen. Uh, he, he, he does a lot of good things. Um, with certain different players putting good good players in position to make a lot of big plays, um, using their skill t skill sets to his advantage, and uh, Stetson does a good job of making checks when needed and putting the offense in a good position. So you know it definitely presents a tough challenge to a defense um, when when a quarterback is able to make changes based on the coverage that you're in. You know, so uh, it's definitely a, a, a challenge. Most defense, do most offenses do that much, or do you think your offense does a little bit more? Oh, uh, it depends on the scheme. I will say probably about. 50% of offenses have that, that system where, you know, if they see you in a certain defense, um, they're going to be able to change. But uh, we had the ability to change our defenses as well. So, you know, um, we work on that a lot to try to be able to execute the game plan the best we can. Chris, you've been with Kirby for five seasons, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, is he always uh, intense? Does he ever, you know, have a, a time where he's kind of mellow? Um, and, and why do you, you know, is how driven he is, does that rub off on you guys? Well, number one, how driven he is definitely rubs off on us. Um, it rubs off on the whole staff, and uh, 
it's just a part of the culture that he's been able to build. Um, he is an intense guy, but he's not intense all the time. He has moments, you know, uh, he'll joke around with you, um, especially when we off the field, you know, and uh, he's he a very fun, cool guy, you know, um, but, you know, a lot of people, all they see is how intense he is, and, you know, he he will get intense with you, and that, and that, that just comes with a part of the game and the way he coaches, and it helps us to see but uh, he, he he cool, yeah. He he have a lot of cool cool moments, you know. You could be you'll be able to joke around with him, play play with him. But it's time for that, and it's a time when it's time to be serious. And you know, um, he does a good job of balancing it. You mentioned a couple times the coaches having played in this rivalry. Who have you heard from the most as far as that goes? I mean, they spent a lot of time with Coach Muschamp, so mm -hmm. maybe him. But, but what's kind of been the message about their experiences with Georgia Tech? Uh, well, uh, probably Coach Smart because, you know, he talks to the team in front of the team a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, he played in this rivalry for many, many, uh, four years, actually. And uh, he just talks about what, it's been, what it means to him and uh, what it means to the, to the rest of, you know, Coach Muschamp. Um, we got James Jennings on the staff. Um, Coach Bobo played play in this rivalry as well. So we just got a lot of coaches that have been able to experience this rivalry and they know what it means to, to our fan base and they know what it means to us. And, you know, uh, we put a lot of time and effort to be able to go out there and execute a game plan and be able to go out there and win. Got time for two more questions. Could you uh, provide a little bit of a, a, a scouting report? I mean, you know, obviously Tech is uh, playing two coming in here playing two quarterbacks that just mm -hmm. knocked off. North Carolina outscored them 21 nothing uh, mm -hmm. there to end the game. Just a little bit of what to expect to see from those guys. Uh, well, number one, uh, we know they they've be, been able to beat two ranked teams since they have a, had a new coach, and uh, you know I think that was Pitt in North Carolina. So they're playing very hard, a uh, very hard, tough nosed team. Uh, quarterback makes a lot of plays. They have very good receivers, uh, big bodies, good running game as well. So you know we got to do. A, uh, they do a lot of things on offense that we have to be able to contain. And, uh, you know, that's what we go to practice for. And, you know, uh, we got Monday and Tuesday down. We got to knock out Wednesday and Thursday. We got to go out there and do our job on Saturday. So you talk about it being a 10 out of 10 experience here. Can you mm -hmm. what, what pinpoint your favorite memory since coming here, your number one moment? My number one moment. Um, outside of the national championship. Yeah, I was going to say it would be wrong for me to go outside of the natty. Oh, man, let me see. I'll say probably my first game where I was able to where I was able to start. Um, I've been asked this question before, and uh, you know it just meant a lot to me. Uh, just all the work I was uh, able to put in, and how much I had to persevere to uh, finally be able to get out there on the field and go to war with my brothers, and you know um, show the world, world what I could do. Um, I'll say that's probably my favorite moment. And uh, no, actually I take that back. It was last year. When we played Clemson, and I got a pick six, <laughs> I take that back. I take that back. Was last year we played Clemson, I got a pick six. So uh, it was just a special moment. Um, uh, you know, it was a very big play. Um, helped help the team be able to get a win that day. You know, my mom was there, my sister was there, my dad wasn't there because he was uh, watching my brother play, and uh, they was playing uh, Stanford, Kansas State, and Stanford, and he actually got a pick earlier in that day. So uh, a lot of my friends and stuff, they know my brother as well. So they like, man, you gotta get one. You gotta get one. So I got one, and then I had to one up my brother and score a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably my favorite moment. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Thanks.